I found something today. But in order to share it in its full depth, I need to go back to three years ago when I first encountered this species. I'm Alex with The Great Outdoors. Today, I want to introduce you to the largest watch species I've ever featured on this channel. If it's Welcome to The Great Outdoors, friends. Let's make a difference. Today, I want to talk about a wasp species that is a very large wasp species. Right here in this capsule, I have what is known as the pigeon horn-tailed wasp. Now, the pigeon horn-tailed wasp is a big wasp species. In fact, the biggest wasp species I've ever featured on this channel. You can see it right here in this capsule. It is commonly mistaken for Pelestes carolina, Pelestes metricus, and various other insect species. Interestingly, though, this one has a very long stinger protruding from the rear of its tail. Well, in fact, that is not a stinger. It's an ovipositor, which all stingers are modified ovipositors. But in this case, it does not generate any sting. Or so they say. And we did find out for certain whether this wasp species actually stings or just looks super menacing. To better understand this wasp species, we'll just go by the type of wasp it is. It's a wood wasp, and they call them that because they use that modified ovipositor. That's the bit hanging off the end of its tail. As a drill in order to bore into wood. The females of the species use their ovipositor to deposit eggs into dead and dying deciduous trees such as beech, elm, maple, and oak. And as the egg turns into a larva, the larva will burrow in and feast on the trees. The giant trim X or the pigeon horn-tailed wasp will bore into the wood like this right through here and plant an egg. The egg will develop into a larva and eventually the larva will develop back into another giant trim X. This one was close to actually becoming a full-grown wasp. Probably had another year though. But unfortunately while splitting firewood, we found them. You just never know what you'll encounter in the great outdoors. You can be searching for a wasp species for silver years and never having the opportunity to capture one. And you can produce your finest video to date and there's always more information to be had. That's what happened in this case. I filmed this like two and a half years ago and yet never have I encountered a giant Trimex or a pigeon horn tail wasp or a wood wasp inside of a piece of wood in the larval form. I thought some of my subscribers might enjoy that. Jimmy Flores writes, I just discovered you. Love your videos. Thank you, my friend. But it's what he said next that inspired me to update this video. I find the stinging ones make me very uneasy. I skip until I find the stuff that's informative. I think you might find a huge market for the infographic viewers. If you separate the stinging videos into their own separate thing. Okay, sure, the original video here was labeled as a stinging video, but obviously this wasp or wood wasp doesn't actually generate a sting. I only called it a sting video to maybe draw in some new viewers. And ultimately, to help people understand that not everything that looks intimidating or menacing is actually dangerous. And if we can better understand these harmless species, then perhaps we can help build some courage for those people who encounter them. And when we do encounter species that have the potential to cause harm, maybe we'll just respect them a little more and let them be on their way. Whether it's a giant crocodile or a wasp or a snake, I think for the most part, most of these animals recognize that they are at risk if they encounter humans and are more likely to flee than fight. And yeah, why a giant crocodile could potentially consider us a prey item, it's not really likely because we're not considered a natural food source for most of these animals. And I also think that you'll find when it comes to wasps and snakes that they're pretty much just being defensive and trying to protect themselves so they can live on. I mean, what chance do these little insects and small snakes compared to us have in a world like this? All they have is their natural adaptations that allow them to make it as far as they have. And their instincts tells them to reproduce. I'm glad I was able to share this video about this wasp and how it reproduces. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and support wildlife conservation. You can consider another good deed for the day. Now the giant Trimex is probably one of the largest wasp species I've ever encountered, but there's a couple others that are very notable. The giant cicada killer wasp that we recently just filmed and did a sting video on was probably close to the same size, if not a little larger and certainly more girthy and packed a heck more punch. So if you like sting videos, be sure to go check out the cicada killer video. And if you really like sting videos, go ahead and look at the playlist. There's like 20 videos on the playlist. While it might seem safe inside of a log, you never know when somebody's going to come through and split it. However, did you know there's a natural predator for the giant Trimex? Post it in the comments if you know what it is. But I'm your host Alex, the Florida Wildlife Guy. Thank you very much for watching this video. We'll see you next time in the great outdoors. Everyone wants to save the planet. I know we can do it. We, we are, are the many. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the colony. colony. Together we have the power to improve our planet. Don't ever underestimate it. The tools are right in front of us. It's your heart and mind at your fingertips. And now we have the connections. We're building a team with a mission. All about conservation. Communication around the earth only takes seconds. Together we will change this planet. All this talk about extinction. So many good reasons to listen. Our existence. Grow a garden and reduce your dependence. Put native trees and flowers in it. Bees, Bees and, and butterflies, butterflies pollinate them. Seeds fall and create new plant seedlings. These plants take in carbon and create oxygen. That is a step towards a solution. That is your power in action. Making a difference, you have our support, friend. Thank you for every moment you listen. If you choose to, thank you for your subscription. I put everything into this content. It's our one and only planet. All the support, I truly appreciate it. Your love alone makes it worth it. I've been stung over a dozen times. I'm not sure how many different places. By over a dozen different species, most with similar reactions. We must respect these bees for pollination. A little sting, that is nothing. That's just their form of protection. We live in a colony. Are we really that different? New videos here every Thursday. That is my commitment. If you have the power to do something positive, you have the responsibility to do it. Well, I said it. I guess I'm obligated. I convinced myself and I'm excited for the changes. We need to be self-aware and stop waiting for legislation. Because growing more food means less pesticides to produce it. Which means more pollinators like bees will not be affected. Growing our own food means an opportunity for you to teach a child what real food is. Because growing food for you means less fuel for transporting it. More food for you means less greenhouse gases. More food for you means less pollution and fertilizer in our water systems. Welcome to the great outdoors, friends. Let's make a difference. Be sure to press the link right down here in the bottom corner. Or if you want to see more sting videos, click on this one. Or this is the one that YouTube said was best suited for you. Hopefully we'll see you again right here in the great outdoors. I'm your host Alex, the Florida Wildlife Guy.